Welcome to Newsmakers Extra, where we continue our conversation with KPRC Chief Meteorologist Frank Billingsley and Meteorologist Jeff Linder with Harris County Flood Control District. We're talking about a lot of things that obviously stand out that we have to really remember that one storm is a lot different than the other. Laura is a whole lot different than Harvey. One of the things we talked about, though, we were hearing these big, big predictions of unsurvivable storm surge. I know, Frank, you did a blog post on that, and let's talk about that a little bit, because sometimes when we talk about, we get our information from the National Hurricane Center and National Weather Service about the expectations of storm surge, and when it doesn't materialize, that's a challenge for a lot of people, including credibility going forward. What, do you th what were the reasons why the, the storm surge did not materialize as it was forecast? Well, first of all, let's talk about the forecast. And Jeff can attest to this. I mean, the government has a cert certain guidelines. And I think the National Hurricane Center basically went with, what do you expect from 150 mile an hour winds? And you expect a storm surge of 15 to 20 feet. That, that used to be in the Saffir Simpson scale. A one, you'd have a one, you'd have one to five, a two, you'd have five to 10, three, you'd have 10 to 15, a four, you'd have 15 to 20, and, and which is what this was, and then a five you'd have over 20. So that, that was taken out of the Saffir Simpson scale after Ike, because Ike was only a two, but produced a surge of a four. So they said, you know what, we need to separate these two, but in the, in the warning system, I don't think they've separated the two. So I think they automatically said, this is possibly gonna be a four, this is a four. So now we're looking at 15 to 20 feet, that's the standard. That's what we're going to warn for. And of course, they, they added the social science of unsurvivable to make sure people heard it, as opposed to life-threatening. So that changed a little bit. Um, and yeah, as I've said in my blog, I, I looked at a lot of different storms, and I don't know if Jeff had a chance to read it, but he'll probably attest to this too, that, that the faster a storm moves, then the less water it's going to be able to push forward because it's going to be moving so quickly. If they're tr if they're just trudging along, then more and more and more water, and because they're so slow. And the size of the storm, like Ike was huge, so it's like a ceiling fan can move. Bigger ceiling fans move more air. Smaller ceiling fans don't, or any fan. So it's like it was smaller in size than Ike or Rita in terms of its diameter of hurricane and tropical storm force winds. It was smaller than than Ike, smaller than Rita, smaller than Katrina, even though it was 150 mile an hour winds, it was just smaller and it moved faster. And that's why the surge was not produced. It was warned for. Jeff, do you agree with me on this? Yeah, I think, I think we have to be careful a little bit right now because if you look at the track it took, um, it looks like potentially some of that surge went in over the marsh areas of areas east of Lake Charles and Cameron. And so we're actually going to be joining a weather service team after Labor Day to go over there and, and mark some of that surge. And so, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll hold my comments on how high the surge actually got. We've seen this before um, with storms where, you know, they're over just, there's not observations there. Nobody really lives out there and we go out and we find, yeah, the surge really did happen. It just didn't happen exactly um, where we were thinking it was. And, and you know, that's a, a huge testament to, it's so important where the center makes landfall when it comes to storm surge. Um, just mere miles makes a difference. And it did in this case for, for Lake Charles, because they, they took the eye right over them. And that storm surge is going to be greatest on the right side or the east side of where the center is, where you have that south wind off the coast. And, and, and Frank, you're absolutely right when you look at this. Um, as this thing strengthened, it contracted, and that center, that core kind of contracted in. And we've seen this with other hurricanes before. If you think about Hurricane Charlie down in southwest Florida, it was it was almost the same intensity, and it had a, a relatively minor storm surge for what you would expect for that intensity. So it, it really is about the wind field, the angle the storm is approaching. There's so many variables when it comes to storm surge, but I don't think you could have taken that luxury on Wednesday morning or even Tuesday and not had that wording and not had some of those values in there for Southwest Louisiana. It's one of the most storm surge prone places along the United States coast up here in the Northwest Gulf. And, and uh, you know, people, they, they had to get out of there. Uh, and, if, and if you were able to come back and your structure still there and you didn't get water in it, that's a good thing. I don't, and some of the rivers, some of the rivers in these inlets, I think we're gonna find a 17 or 18 foot storm surge just because you put all that water into a small space, so it goes up. It's not exactly storm surge in what, what we think of, but it is a result of storm surge. So just like 
uh, just like Harvey didn't really bring a storm surge, but you know, there's, there's a lot of ways to get high water across an area, whether it's coming down or it's being pushed in or it's the storm surge at high tide. There's a lot of different ways. And really, a fi- I mean, st- storm surge and inland flooding are responsible for more than 50% of hurricane deaths, if I'm not mistaken. And the majority of, of deaths from a hurricane are from flooding, floodwaters both freshwater and coastal flooding. So I think almost all of them are unsurvivable if you are in them, mm-hmm. you know, if you were really in them, unless yeah. you're a heck of a swimmer. I you, mean, you know, really, it's uh, right, right. a five foot storm surge is unsurvivable if you are in the wrong place at the wrong time. And, and those of us who saw Bolivar on the backside of Ike, we can understand that they, it can be really devastating. It doesn't take a whole lot. Uh, we're just, we, you may mention about the fact we're, we're at an L and M and N and O in terms of storm names already. I, I know about you guys, but I tend to take it one name at a time. But now we're at so far into the storm season already. How concerned are you about the season ahead and how active it may continue to be going forward? Jeff? Yeah, I'm not necessarily overly concerned about how far down the name list we've gotten. Um, There's a lot of stuff that's kind of been named this year that uh, has been kind of short lived, you know, less than a day or so. And so it's really pushed us down that name list. Uh, not until the last few weeks have we getting have we been getting what kind of we call the the quality tropical systems the one that come out of the deep tropical Atlantic. Um, one thing that is concerning and and that really has been concerning is this kind of staring pattern we've been in and that's you know the Caribbean toward the Gulf of Mexico uh, and also the fact that easterly uh, African waves the tropical waves that move off of Africa have been struggling to develop out in the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, and when that tends to happen, you tend to get development closer into the U.S. coast, which increases the risk of, of an impact here. And we've seen that this year in the Bahamas, uh, in the Western Caribbean, and, and in the Gulf of Mexico. That seems to be the kind of favorite area this year for the development. And unfortunately, that certainly uh, raises the threat for an impact. And so, yeah, it's it's late August. We still have, like Frank mentioned earlier, we still have about five weeks to go here on the Texas coast. Um, our hurricane season here kind of ends around the first uh, couple weeks of October. Um, but yeah, we can, we, we've certainly had big storms in September before and we need to continue to prepare. And, and one thing um, to remember is the weather doesn't know what just happened. And so just because we had Hannah and just because we had Cristobal and just because we had uh, Laura, the weather has no recollection that we've had three storms here toward the Northwest Gulf this year. And so uh, whatever happens when the next storm comes is, is up to that steering pattern and, and that and all that and not uh, what's happened previously. Frank, what's your messaging to viewers uh, in the weeks ahead? Because those who are just gotten through with this one and some of those folks in our far eastern areas, they watch us. And so they're going to be fatigued by what's been going on. What's your message to the folks about what's what we have ahead in terms of the time period we have to continue to keep our eyes toward the tropics and be aware and be concerned? I would say get, balance your balance your emotions with it. Like Jeff said, uh, we have about five weeks left, and and the steering patterns have not been favorable for the Gulf of Mexico. We do have a front, hopefully in the next ten days, but you know maybe not. But at least if we can start getting fronts in here late mid September, late September. That's what will help us. Uh, we had you know, Hannah to our south. We had Cristobal and Laura now off to our east. It's not like it, like Jeff said, it's not like it's our turn. Mother Nature doesn't say, oh, well, now it's not time for us to throw something toward uh, Houston. So um, just, you know, keep that balance there because people are already freaking out a little bit just because there are a couple of systems in the Atlantic. It's like, oh, no, well, we must be next. And that's not true at all. We, we're not necessarily next in any way, shape or form. Uh, your chances are about 2% every year to actually have something hit you. Um, and that doesn't change just because something came close. It doesn't make your chances go higher. Um, and there are fronts coming in. And you know, just like the pandemic we've been going through, you have to balance your emotions of what, what might happen and not, not get panicked over it. So my message would be, you know what? Live your life, pay attention to the weather, stay weather aware, follow Jeff on, on Facebook, follow us at Channel 2 and, or whoever you want, and, and just make sure that you're you know, vigilant and weather aware, we don't freak out. There's nothing to freak out about. It's the season, that's it. Yeah, and it's the season we get into every year, so nothing changes in that regard. 
Jeff Linder, Frank Billingsley, thank you so much for this conversation. I know a lot of people who are concerned and, uh, and wondering about the season ahead will get something out of this. I hope that they can use down the road. Thank you both again. We appreciate it. Uh, Houston Newsmakers Extra, this is a good opportunity to share this with everybody you know.